intensity may be more than some wish to be exposed to, and those people should be forewarned. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everyone in between, welcome once again to an intense and already terrifying <laughs> Scared and Alone. We are live and about to begin our paranormal investigation, the only live and interactive paranormal investigative show happening right now. As always, we're going to be coming to you from the home, home Holbrook Homestead in South Weymouth, Massachusetts, and assembled, as always, our incredible team of paranormal investigators, starting with down in Louisiana, New Orleans. It is our gentleman psychic, our very own spectral, Bob Ross. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Richard Lill Lillard. Richard Lill, how are you? Everybody, welcome. I feel like I haven't seen you in days. <laughs> it has been a whole week. I see your canvas is already prepared. Your brushes are sharpened, your palette refreshed. It is indeed. We are in for quite a haunting, not only because of our technical difficulties, but I've, I've been noticing there's a tinge with my light too. So whatever is there, Courtney, is it, you're in for quite a surprise, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure we are. And from California, the good witch, very own. She's in the middle of WitchCon right now, another live con. It is Patty Negri, ladies and gentlemen. Patty, how are you? I am great. I am happy to be here in my safety of my own home as we watch Courtney traverse through the haunted halls of darkness. Thrilled to be here. Let's go. And David Sloan is out, not with us. And taking his place is the fantastic paranormal investigator and no slouch with the Ouija board, as I remember in Michigan. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's Tim Shaw, ladies and gentlemen. Tim, how are you? Another day in paradise here. You know how it is. Yeah. And New I, York State. I, you, yeah. I, I just want to let you know that Ouija boards are fun and I am surrounded by them. Just to let you just to let you know on the other side of on the other side of this camera, I have a collection of 83 of them. Good. 84 now, I'm sorry. 84 now. So wow. just in case we need one, I, I got them all handy. It's always good to have backup. And of course, coming to us from the Holbrook Homestead. The bravest person in paranormal. It's Courtney Buckley, ladies and gentlemen. Courtney, how are you? I am terrified already. It started before I got here. My spirit box turned itself on in the car while I was driving. And then when I was here sitting, waiting to come on, I heard scratching. And then during the time that we were having our technical difficulties, I heard footsteps upstairs and on the stairs and i heard what sounded like someone clear their throat from upstairs <laughs> okay so now let me I, get this straight you're, you're also locked in by yourself yep. somebody lo locked you into this yeah uh, so normally normally we have somebody like in the vicinity who if i panic and i need to be rescued they could enter the property and then come and get me and help me and that is not the case tonight i am locked Yay. in and oh. <laughs> not, not yay. Yes, <laughs> this is the Holbrook, Holbrook Homestead. It is a historical, now it's a museum and an archive, archival <laughs> place of uh, documents. The house was built in 1793, if I'm not mistaken. Do you know that, Courtney? I don't know because I come in as blind as I can. Oh, fantastic. Yes, I believe that it was originally built. It's been in four generations, including Frederick and Mary Ellen. And Frederick, of course, had suffered severe mental illness and all their children had suffered also terrible traumatic events. We'll have Debbie joining us audio, who has a bit of the history of the place later on. But why don't you tell us where you are now, Courtney? Um, I am currently in the dining room. Mm -hmm. It is 
well lit the room of my nightmares because i have friends in here <laughs> you've been looking at those mannequins mm -hmm. all the time oh sure have and then there's a mirror too terrible there's dolls everywhere it's exactly all the things that i love Oh, and there's Rosie Dean, your favorite, your best oh, friend. Gosh. Did you bring her again? Oh, I sure did. You know I, I know did. she terrifies me. She keeps I'm... me safe. While I was all alone in here listening to footsteps, almost crying, I was clutching her, and then I didn't run from the building. So I feel like that's a win. Okay, fantastic. Now, Tim, this being, I believe, your first episode joining us, what we do is we wait and uh, we get energies based on and tell Courtney what she should do. So why don't you lead us off, Tim? And any suggestions on an action Courtney should take? The first thing that I am very hit by is that there's two to three people that have died in the house that were laid out right where Courtney is sitting. And uh, I just want to let you, I just feel that perhaps you might be able to go and do a little contact work with them. You've already got you've already gotten footsteps. That's fantastic. I love footsteps, man. That's my favorite thing when I get a chance to go and hear them. So maybe ask for some wrappings, old school. So maybe you can get a little get a little something going. Just project yourself out there and see what goes on. Now, if Patty and I were there, we would probably tip that table pretty well. That yeah. Know, there, I heard that there is going to be a table tipping here fairly soon, which is fun. Yeah. In this room. Yeah. Uh, and explain for those who don't know, like myself, what is table tipping? Table tipping is an old spiritualist way of communicating with spirit. And it used to be part of the old seances, the traditional seances, where you put your hands on the table and you allow the table to build energy. And the table will basically start to vibrate and start to move around. And it's a fun, it's a fun thing to do. It's a beginning week as a kid, when I went to Lyceum, that was something that we were taught as something to allow us not to be afraid of physical phenomena. So that's our entryway into physical phenomena, but you can go and you can ask it to start tapping out. You can get taps through the table. You can get the one of the legs or whatever to go and move and you can do the alphabet wrapping system, A, B, C, D. And when it hits on a letter, just write that letter down, and that's that's how you get words. They started working with that again back in the 1970s up in Toronto, Canada, during the Philip experiments. It's a long time, it's a long time physical phenomena key, and we love doing that. That's something that I really. That's the thing that I love to do when we're <laughs> out and about. If we can go and we can get that, let's get I our. Just, and you and taught me how to do it. No, I was to say, Tim taught me how to do it because I've been doing seances since I was seven, but I'd never done table two. And all of a sudden I'm doing an event that it was advertised and I thought I was doing a gallery or something. It was, and table tipping by Patty Negri. I'm like, what? Tim? <laughs> Tim? And he taught me how to do it. And it works. It's amazing. It really is so different than any other phenomenon. That table bounces, jumps, moves crazy. So oh, yeah. You how to do it, Courtney, and have the I, table flying around the room. If I can learn from the best, I'm willing to learn. You He's guys. the best. I say, Courtney, that you should always tip your tables like you tip your waitress. <laughs> <laughs> excessively or 15%? I'm not sure. Oh, oh. Definitely excessively. You should definitely, excessively. definitely tip it excessively. Uh, right. Not the way that we tip cows. That's a whole other thing. That's a prairie <laughs> thing from Canada. Don't kid yourself. That's what I thought you were referring to back in the day. This you guys prairie boy right here said, hey. What's that, Courtney? Lights on or off? Off. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And what's the blue light behind you that you put on the, the baby? So this is my new this is my new K2 meter. I got it at Michigan Paracon this year. Oh. Oh, and that's I, fancy. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Okay. All right. This is a okay. Now I'm in the dark with these mannequins. I hate you guys. <laughs> I'm also terrified. Yeah, okay. All right. My name is Courtney. I am here to talk to you, to learn from you not to hurt you or scare you. And if anyone is here with me, I heard you earlier, but you're welcome to come down here in this room with me. 
and make a noise, not make a knock on the wall, knock on the table, do something that we all can hear. Courtney, why don't you put your hands lightly with your fingertips on the table itself? And what I would like to suggest is that you invite the spirits to let their energy enter into the table. Because my table, my desk that I'm working off of right now is starting to vibrate. So if it's starting to vibrate here on the East Coast, I'm not that, I'm only about probably about 12 hours drive away from you. You should be doing good. It should connect through. All right. Any spirits in here that want to talk to us? My hands are on the table. Connect to the table. Enter the table. Connect to my energy through the table. And let's build that energy. Ooh. Spirit, build that energy. It feels like the table is moving. Spirit, really? build that energy. Build that energy through Courtney. Follow my voice as a guidepost. Send it through to Courtney. Send it through. Build it through. I just heard a footstep again. Excellent. Oh, Love that. Stairs or behind you? It was to the left of me. I was getting the same room. It's the same room. Spirit, build that energy through Courtney into the table. Let's bring that. Come on, bring that vibration up, guys. Bring it up for Courtney. <laughs> you might feel sticky in your fingers, the ectoplasm. That's what really helped me when Tim told me about that. Your fingers will start to get sticky. I feel that. Yeah. I'm like barely touching the table, but they feel like they're stuck. I, there's a cold breeze, literal breeze by my knee right now. Excellent. Keep building. Keep it's building. Hard. You have chakra points in all your fingertips. That's where the ectoplasm is starting to connect through. Spirit, listen to my voice. Connect through to Courtney. Connect through to Courtney. Build that spirit. Build that energy spirit. Come on. <laughs> you got it. Let's go. Let's build it up. Let Courtney act like a battery. Let it all attract right to her. Come on, Courtney. You got it, kiddo. You got it. I am literally sitting. The heat just kicked on, and I'm literally sitting in a cold spot. Wow. That's excellent. That's excellent. So we know from the history that there's multiple generations that have been through this house. Tim, when you say spirit, are you referring to one spirit that you're sensing, or is it a multitude like Patty said last week, what, what's the name of the uh, all entity when all the spirits? There's an egregore. We have, there's an egregore. Yeah. Is that? I'm, I'm actually zoomed in on three particular spirits: two men and one woman, ah. and they're very strong. And I and from what I'm feeling, from my vantage point, is that this energy is dormant into the house until you get the right person at the right time. And I think Courtney has got that vibe that's going. And I think that's right. what they're starting to wake up a little bit. And I think because when she got there, she already had started to get phenomena. Right. I believe that she is the right person. And tonight is probably the right time to do that. Historically, Frederick and Mary Ellen were married and lived there and had three children. And Mary Ellen was, of course, a quite an advocate of women's rights. And uh, Frederick suffered from mental uh, quite severely. And the male energies you could be feeling is both those two, because they were quite prevalent, and uh, all their children. Two died very young. And then the other one was in the Spanish-American War and disappeared into Alaska. And his uniform from the Spanish-American War still sits upstairs. So oh, that's wonderful. I feel like my fingers want to play a piano. That's perfect. That's well, exactly what's going on. Play it. Put some motion into it. Do you know piano, Courtney? I don't, but I feel like I can, All right, now I can almost see, see myself yep. as a man okay, bye. with a vest and a bow tie and like a long white sleeve shirt playing the piano. 
Debbie has just joined us on audio and she knows some historical details about this place. Debbie, can you hear us? Okay, now I can. Oh, great. Debbie, we are in the middle of perhaps channeling somebody who has a bow tie and describe it again, Courtney, what do you? I feel like I'm a man wearing like slicked back dark hair, bow tie vest, and I'm playing the piano. Does that describe anybody from the Holbrook house to your recollection, Debbie? Not that I can think of, no. Playing a piano. We were just talking about Frederick and Mary Ellen and their marriage and their tragic life with their children. One died of tuberculosis at the age of 19. The other one died early and the other son disappeared into Alaska. Yes. Were there any other children that I'm missing? They had a... They had a brother, William. He was the baby. Uh And he became a lawyer. And his daughter was the last one to be born in the house. Oh, and what year was that? Jane was born around 1920, I think. Okay. And that's her there? Oops, where is it? I'm not seeing anything. Oh, okay. We are seeing, there's the pictures of Frederick and Mary Ellen. A love match if I ever saw one. Stern, <laughs> let's say they look stern. Courtney, what are you feeling? It got quiet and calm in here. The cold spot is gone. Okay. I wonder though, uh, there's a woman that I see and she's back in the kitchen. This is probably around 18... Like this is 18, 1810. It's it, she's not, but she keeps pointing to the. I, like, I don't know where the well is, but she keeps pointing to. The, I don't know what that means, but she's pointing to the well. As water as a source of energy, or might as, be. It might be water is a source of energy. Maybe that's what it is. Courtney, do you have any water there? I put some water in my energy drink. <laughs> <laughs> in my in the can of energy drink that I had. That, that kind. That, Kind of works. It's energy, of course. Do we know how? Do we know the, what the water table is? There is the. Is it a high water table? No, yeah. it isn't. No, it isn't. It's low. I assume that for the last two hundred fifty years of drawing water from wells, probably lowered the water table as development went through all of Massachusetts. Courtney? What do you mean? Here, come in here. I feel like they're right outside. Come in here. Come talk to us. It feels like I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. Oh. I swear to God, if one of these mannequins starts moving, I'm out of here. <laughs> You're not about to. No. Just think there's only what? Just what? Four eyes looking at you from the side? Or is there more mannequins than two? There's two mannequins and a doll behind me. And your own doll sitting right in the right corner. Don't even turn it towards the camera, please. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. I got a phobia about buttons, and it just button eyes is where it goes south for me. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I don't know. I just you can't have, button eyes. What? You've offended her. <laughs> I offended her. Perhaps Watch out tonight, Dean. Watch out tonight. Oh, she does. Dark hallways. If you have any dark hallways in your house, she'll be there. Oh my gosh. Look, I'm the host of this thing. I'm not the hunt. What am I doing? What? <laughs> Don't worry. It's not a Roomba. She's not a Roomba. <laughs> not the, that, okay. That thing just last night was over here after our show a week ago. It just, it didn't even, I didn't even have it warmed up or charged. And it was across the studio when I came back the next day. So don't even joke about my haunted Roomba, Richard Lell. Rosie's going to ride it around your house. You know what? I think I was happier when I was kicked out of this show for the first seven minutes. 
<laughs> yeah, we Dean. did have some technical difficulties getting in it. Yeah. Yeah, this is, I should tell everybody who's watching, and this is a disclaimer, all of these shows we are transversing with supernatural qualities that do have electrical power in nature. And all of us have experienced either our monitors, speakers, lights, my Roomba, for instance, doing odd things. So we are not responsible for anything electric going weird in your house as you watch the show. So please continue. Courtney. I'm starting to get like a headache on this side of my head right here. Oh, that mannequin behind you? Why would you say things like that? It doesn't make <laughs> It's headless. I don't know what that dress is. Our producer Rob said that the brown one is a wedding dress. I don't remember the style portion of wedding dresses being bridely brown, but they were actually in the 19th century. In the 19th century, a woman would wear a dress that would be something that she could wear again. It would be a really nice dress. White was really hard to keep clean. And really, it was only Queen Victoria who made it popular. And then even still, people didn't do that until really the 20th century, the white dress. Uh, yes, it belonged to Lydia Shaw, and she married Gilman Loud in 1863. Oh, so that's this one. Hold on. Which bread? Oh. Here, let me turn this around. Can you wow. see it? Can you see it? Yes. That's beautiful. It is pretty. Yes. The Is that a the hat? Is the furry like that? Or is that supposed to be a wig? It has like feathers on it. Hold on. Oh, feathers. Yeah. Ah. Oh, well, huh. Should we try to talk to Lydia? Yeah. Sure. Looking at her dress. Absolutely. Okay, hold on. Oh, oh man. Okay, so we got nothing here. Lydia. Your dress is beautiful. Can you come model it for us? <laughs> oh, it, it does not feel real welcoming. It no, I, something's touching me on my yeah, like, no, I, like it just it, tried to move me out of the way. Yeah. Oh. Get that's away awesome. From me. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, but it does not feel like it's thrilled with what you're doing. Yeah, who is that awesome for? Because last week it touched me in a different place and I didn't like it. <laughs> but we remember. <laughs> we used the word derriere. We'll use whatever word I want because I was going to touch there. Oh, I swear to God, I just thought I saw her mouth open. Did Courtney? No, I don't know. She says Courtney. Richard Courtney. Richard Lowe. Richard Lowe, please. We're gonna not be friends anymore. This is. <laughs> is this a show where we all taunt each other to death? <laughs> yes. No, let's not have that. But I Let think you need to turn the lights off again. The light. Okay, so let me turn this light off. This is my. That's my lantern. She wants to dance, says Tabitha. How do you make? Hey, Ma'am? Madam? Would you like to dance? Now, I just felt a super sadness. It went from mm -hmm. agitated to sad whether it's a different energy or the same. Does anybody else feel that? Yeah, it's kind of. Yeah. What is that sound, that music? Sadness. No, I actually heard music through my speakers. Was Sadness. that some ringtone? Well, that 
Yeah, that wasn't from here. No, that wasn't from here either. Who had that? Not Did anyone else hear that? I speakers? heard it. Like chimes or something. Yeah, I heard yeah. that. I have chimes, but I have my phone off. That doesn't mean anything. Nothing. I just heard it through my speakers. Who's got chimes going? Richard Lell, do you have a... <gasps> it sounded like a door or something. I just heard... I just heard a step upstairs. Oh, no. So, Courtney, maybe you should just say, you should ask them who is here. Who is here with us? There it was again. It sounded like a text tone to me. Yeah. That's what it does sound like. Whose phone is on? We all mute our phones. Muted me. Five of us. Mine is muted. Mine is gone. Mine is gone. Patty. Muted right here. Mute. So who's getting a ringtone? Lydia. Lydia. <laughs> Lydia. She's got a cell phone. <laughs> and very bad service. Oh. We're in a dead zone. I can't. <laughs> Courtney, let me ask you this. What are you seeing in your mind's eye? Take a look around, just even if you're going to close your eyes, and picture what the energy that's surrounding you may embody in a human form. And just as a male, female, what at the height, what do they kind of look like? Because I do feel like there's somebody that's really coming very close to you and is very curious about you. And again, there's other things going on, but really this one it i don't want to i don't want to color what you're feeling okay i feel so i get things sometimes in i feel feelings or like energy and right now it's like this side of my face i feel like something's wrong with my throat on this side or someone's like doing this to my face Male or female? Well, how do you? It, it feels female, but I don't. It feels like the strokes of the hand is are, are they smooth? Are they rough? It's smooth. It's older. It's a, an older female. That a it girl. Feels like, but it's not like it's a. Oh my sweet summer child, you're in for it. Like right before the hammer strikes. It's like comfort before the hammer strikes. That's excellent. You're doing great. You're doing great. Can you go and just maybe visualize from that energy what this person is wearing or from what you can actually feel from this person wearing? Is it a is it an older dress? Is it a is it something that may have fit the time period of the 1800s or something a little bit later, let's say 1950s? Up to you. What is? How does that energy make you feel? What is it making you visualize? It's a dress like this, but white on the top and blue on the bottom. Uh -huh. Perfect. Hair in a bun. Perfect. With like scragglies out, salt and pepper. Perfect. Maybe, maybe glasses, but like small ones. Perfect. Now... Why don't you ask her why? And when I say why, why is she attracted to you? Because as a spiritualist, we believe in the natural laws. And one of the natural laws is likes attra like attracts like. And I found in my investigations, I seem to uh, attract like spirits when I'm working, which is not always the best thing to attract. But why do you think and why do you feel that she may be attracted to you i feel like she's warning me oh about what courtney about upstairs what's oh. upstairs courtney i don't know i feel okay like i feel like i just inhaled smoke like my throat is burning oh is it does it feel like 
you're having trouble breathing, let's say in the upper part of your lungs, or is it just in your throat? No, it's just my throat. Like I inhaled smoke. You're already starting to get a frog in your throat. So that's a physical phenomenon. It's a physical reaction to the energies that you're, that you're experiencing. Are you comfortable with it? The reason I ask, because I can, because all you have to say is you can give me the impression of smoke, but you may not go and physically put it into my throat. And if you don't feel comfortable, just say, Hey, I want to slide, I want to just slide this over into my etheric body. And this way you'll be able to go and perceive what's going on while not having it really bother your throat. So that's up to you if you want to do that or you want the full experience. I feel okay for right now, but I reserve the right to change my mind. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. That's good. I have I have a spot again in the same spot, but I'm sitting in a different I'm sitting differently. But it's at my leg again. At your leg. And I'm like the right side of my body, right here. So it's interesting. Debbie just mentioned that and other people online in the comment section mentioned leather cutting and that the shoes were made in this house and the Tyrell family was one of the, had one of the first major shoe factories in Weymouth where they would ship shoes from around the world. And I know leather tanning is very corrosive to very much. and the throat. Richard Lell? I would like to add too that Courtney has been saying that she's been waiting for the other shoe to drop. Ah, she's yeah. the other shoe to drop. She's been waiting for the other shoe to drop. She said it like five times. Yep. Yep. So this all comes to leather, uh, leather Wait, production. Hold on. Because upstairs, in the room that scares me the most from when I walked through the tour, there's a pair of shoes. And when I walked in, instantly my eyes were drawn to them. Oh. Synchronicity. Well, yeah. Oh, God. Synchronicity. It works. <laughs> It works. Like so attracts like, kiddo. That's the way it works. My chest hurts. <laughs> oh, no. Just keep, that... keep breathing. Keep You're breathing. You're okay. Keep Why breathing. don't we switch rooms, Courtney, and go to the Bible room, the file room, and oh, then we'll sure. check in with Richard Lell on his painting and uh, see how he's doing while you move to the next room. Richard Lell? I'm okay, but you might notice my light is, th well, this energy is... Even messing with my light from there. We are, we're in for a fun night, I'm sure. We are. Tell me what, you've seen this house before? Is this how you've... I have a picture of it, but I don't know anything else about it. But I just say what I see. I saw the woman at the... I don't know what she was saying, but she was... She's in the back. There's a lot here. There's a lot of... There's a lot of... There's a lot of external death. I don't know what it represents, but there's a lot of death. I just am... I'm... I love it. I do love this house. It, it, it intrigues me. And the colors you chose, the blue shutters and everything, is that you don't have a color photograph of this place? I don't have a color photograph, no. You just assuming that these are the colors of the... The blue is, the, the blue is not going to be, it's not going to remain. It, it's, I'm piecing it in. I'm going to go back in with more white, but blue is what I see. Okay. I love it. Let's go back to see if Courtney has situated. Oh my, what was that? It's my, I told you, the, the, it's the, they're playing with my light. Richard wow. Lane, I must say, I have never seen you so casual before. I know. You just yeah, that's right. Shirt we look. You see your wrists, that's like almost. Right. It's like showing my ankles. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's so racy, Richard Hill. Oh my gosh. 60, 60. <laughs> Fantastic. Courtney, you're now in the known as file room or the Bible room, as Christy Parrish calls it, because there's some historic Bibles in there. Is that correct? That is correct. I walked through out oh, this door is the top of oh. the stairs. Your image oh, froze up on this. Courtney, can um, you hear? I just heard Yep, I just heard a noise in the room with me. When I went through the top of the stairs, there was I walked through a cold spot to come in here, and I feel like there's somebody. Behind. Okay. Also, the internet has been great through all this place, but now you're choppy as all get out. Oh my God. 
Be careful about saying choppy, Dean. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Your internet is intermittent, shall we say. There, that's better. What? Explain again what you're feeling. Behind me, right here is the top of the stairs. Uh huh. And when I walked up the stairs, I walked through another cold spot. And I was in the middle of saying, I feel like there's someone standing behind me. And then over here, I heard a sound, like a step in the room with me. I'm sensing a short and stout male. I don't know if that goes with anybody in the house, but that's what I'm seeing. I'm like shaking. I feel very different up here. Describe the room. We're just seeing files behind you. Is it yep. what? How big is this room? Oh, it's tiny. Yeah. And just packed with artifacts. So right here, over in this area, is where I heard the step. Say hello, Courtney. Hello, Courtney. <laughs> or just say hello. Hello, I'm Courtney. I was down. Oh. I was downstairs a minute ago. I just saw something right here. I was awesome. downstairs a minute ago. And now I'm upstairs. And I still don't mean anybody any harm. I'm just here to tell your story and to get to know you. Is there anybody think, in with me? I think you need less light. Of course you do. Okay. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> Good one, Patty. Thank you. It's so hard to see ghosts in bright sunlight. Oh my gosh, that is dark. Yeah, it sure is. Super. Hold on. Oh my god. Have I your flashlight there. Oh my god. <gasps> oh. I'm hearing something. It made a noise. I, you know. That was great. What? It's the man, the short and stout man. What is that sound? It was me opening paint. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pick your movements wisely, please. But I'm not, no, it's not paint. It's something else. I'm hearing. I had heard something else. It wasn't the. Uh... That time, too. This hasn't gone off this whole time, and it just went off a little bit. Courtney. Yes. Can you ask it to, can you ask this? Spirit to get a little bit closer, maybe even touch into your auric field. Cool, sure. Why not? Not my butt. <laughs> Whoever is here with me, come closer. You can come closer. Can you touch me? Did you just see that? No. What was? I just looked up and saw something run across the light right here on the screen. We didn't have full screen. Oh my God. Can you come close again. and touch me? Who's that talking, Courtney? Yeah, who is that talking? I don't know. That's definitely language. Definitely yeah. language. Is, do you hear it or do we just hear it on the speakers here? I didn't hear it. I heard it on my speakers. I can, hear it, I can hear it on my headset. I hear a dog and then there's talking. Yeah. Do you hear anything, Courtney? No. Uh, I hear a dog. Hear that might be me. Not my dog. It's another dog. Okay. My dog's a higher pitch. But I also hear talking, not just, I can separate the dog from. Yeah, there's definite language. There's some kind of language going on. If that's you, talk louder. Talk louder. I can hear you. That's the dog. Something just touched the small of my back. Again, like they're trying to move me out of the way. 
Courtney, don't let them push you around. Push well, back. Yes. I didn't move, so that's on me. And music. Yeah, I hear music. That I hear it like coming from my phone. Yeah, me it's from my speakers. I thought it'd be in your room. Anybody got music playing in their vicinity, Patty? No. Nope. No, but the dog is coming from here, so that yeah. could be, I could not that I can hear in my place. I could here. I will mute and see if it all stops, and then it's coming from my house, even if I don't hear it. Okay. Now I heard something. What was that? It sounded like a whisper. Did you hear that? Yeah. A whisper or a foot brushing on the carpet? That was here. You heard? That was out in the hallway. I heard that. It's almost like it wants Courtney to follow it. I think that's by going and making those noises just out of reach. I think that's what they want. I think they want her to follow it. Now, you got two courses of action on this one. Me, of course, I'd run after it and see what would go on. But, Courtney, it's up to you whether you want to stay in that room and work a little bit and see if you can bring whatever it is closer to you to get some kind of two-way phenomena going on. Or you can go and you can go and just take a tour of the house if it's wanting to take you out there. And I've heard something else that just – did you guys hear a little something? I did. Just a little something. And it sounds like it was like more of an echo. So it would be outside of Courtney's vicinity. Oh, my God. I feel like there was something in here with me. I think there. I think I'm dealing with two different things. That's even cooler. I feel like whatever's in here, like I can almost see that short, stout man that Patty's talking about. Yeah. Working in here. But then there's something else. That I don't know if the camera picked it up or not, but I saw it out of the, as I was turning earlier. But like I said, it, was, it ran this way. I keep hearing the footsteps out there. I think that's something else. And that was cold and it's warm in here. Right. So I, now, do I don't know the sizes of any of the children, but of course, Mary Ellen and Frederick's one child, Edward, was 19 years old when he died of tuberculosis. Which, fun fact, I was just recently diagnosed and cured from. Ah. So I can now be the trigger object for that. Oh. I have the cure. There's ghosts in my blood now. Oh, and it was Ellen, sorry, not Edward, who died in 19 from tuberculosis. Like, I have these Bibles here in front of me. Uh-huh. That I'm allowed to touch. Courtney. Yep. Since there are so many Bibles, what do you say we say the Lord's Prayer backwards? Oh, God. What? What? Why would we do that, Richard Lell? Sometimes it gets a trigger. So why not? Let's try it. Let me Google it so we can find I out. I would rather just open up the Bible and read the first thing I look at. Okay, do that. All right, let me get a flashlight because I can't see anything. Hold on. Okay, somebody saw a red light in the window. Is there taillights? Is no, there... so there was a fire truck that went by. Oh, fire truck that went by. Okay. I'm right next to the fire station, but a, a fire truck or an ambulance or something just went by. Hold on. Okay. There's nothing better than the poke the devil when you get a chance to do it. Oh, God. It says she's experienced a male with a beard, and he says something like, yes, mother. Oh, like that's neat. To his wife. Are you that's hearing that? That's neat. I don't love that. <laughs> no. Coming, mother. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let me show you. Hold on. <gasps> what happened? Did you just hear it? Your camera. Wait, let's... It felt like a dress, or it sounded like a dress brushing against the floor. Twice. 
Ask him if it's his dress. <laughs> Who? Him. Ask him if it's his dress. Sir, are you wearing a dress? Oh, it's getting cold in here. Tell him he needs to add more layers to his dress. <laughs> oh my God. You gotta add more layers to that. Ooh. I feel like I'm about to get reprimanded. How's that Bible coming, Courtney? No, hold on, because I literally am standing right here. I'm not even joking. It felt like I got the cold came in and stood next to me. And this felt like a stern woman, maybe like 40s. 1940s or age 40s? Age 40. Who, wearing like a high-collared something... Who stood next to me like I was in trouble and I was about to get like a ruler to the hand if I didn't oh. do something. And I was sweating in here a second ago. Okay, I'm gonna show you. I'll, I'll read the Bible. I don't know if that's what you want, but I'll read the Bible. So I have this Bible right here. Holy. And this Bible right here. And this Bible right here. Wow. Which one do you want? Wow. It says it contains four centuries of family lore. Do the first one, Courtney. The this first one? one? That one? Do the first one. Okay. Okay. Open it up. Open it up to page 263. <laughs> oh, is that the page number? I don't know. I don't know. It might have. You see the date on it? 1812. Yeah. The Canadian American War. I'm sorry. You know it as the uh, War of 1812. War of 1812. In Canada, we knew it as the Canadian War. 200 and what? 63. Oh my God. Middle of the page. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines and the Lord wrought a great victory. Three of the 30 chief went down and came to David in the harvest time unto the cave of Adullam and the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Rephaim. Okay. Hmm. I like oh, and David longed and said, oh, that one would give me a drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. Do you guys see this? Yep. So this is the you saw, Richard. It might be. Oh, my God. And the water and the water, even with a low water table. And your voice and people are saying you should get a You should have a drink, Courtney. And it's 263. Wow. Wild. That is wild. Okay. <laughs> so, Richard Lell, what should we learn from this? I liked that. It, it said something about so a, a standing, standing your ground, I think. And I think that, Courtney, that is the lesson for you. Stand your ground. If you feel that you are being pushed, if you feel that you are being adjusted if you feel that they are walking by you if you feel like that they are pushing you out of the way stand your ground yeah i definitely feel like it's happened twice now where i feel like i'm being moved or like they're attempting to move me that's why stand your ground <sighs> having said that courtney I want you to, I want you to say, I am Courtney Buckley and I am standing my ground. I am Courtney Buckley and I am standing my ground. I almost choked on that. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I heard like just before I started when you were talking, Richard Little, I heard the dress dress slithering noise from next to me. Right. Swishing on the ground. Why don't we pick up on Tim's idea to follow that energy and go over to what's known as the war room okay. as we check in with Richard Lell and see how his painting's going. Because war, what is it good for? Absolutely <laughs> nothing. <laughs> my, wait a minute, that's from my generation. <laughs> Maybe I'm older than I look. <laughs> okay. Tell us about your painting. Are you going to put a well in? Do you have any sense of where the well, or was that a metaphorical well that we talked about in the box? I don't know. I just, there was a woman st standing. You see this light? Yeah. What's that light? doing? It is not liking me, or the spirit is not liking me. I don't know which, but uh, yes. So I am, I was just painting the house, but now I'm actually going to put my specters in that I have seen. I don't know where they, where they're going to go yet, but uh, there's, one woman in particular that I keep seeing, and I like her, but she can be a little stern. Uh -huh. I don't like her. Uh huh. Do you think it's, are you liking her because of her independent spirit? You know what it is? She feels to me like she is incredibly strong. Mm -hmm. She feels like that, she almost feels like, I don't need anybody. Fine, you're here. Okay, great. But I don't need anybody. She's very independent. She's, she is, she's very strong. That sounds like Mary Ellen. She was one of the, I believe, the first females on the school council, if I'm not mistaken. Also quite early suffragette, as we might say. That so. must be her. She's fascinating. She is, she's very independent. She's very strong. She uh, it's she doesn't say women's lib because that doesn't happen till later, but she's very strong. Fantastic. That sounds like Mary Eleanor. So now, Courtney, we're in the war room. You we are, are standing here. with artifacts from uh, multiple world wars and Boer Wars and the Spanish-American War, which one of Frederick and Mary Ellen's sons participated in. I believe his uniform is there before he disappeared to Alaska. There's a drum there. Ask the spirit to play the drum. The antique oh. drums at my house play a lot. That's an easy one for spirit. Oh, it is it? Yeah, because yep. my house is full of those and they boom. Well, you're not going to get a rim shot or a drum solo, but I bet you if you ask the spirit to play. Look at all the drums. Wow. Play the drum for us. I feel a lot less vulnerable right now sitting on the floor than I do standing up. I think it's too bright in there. Of course you do, Patty. <laughs> Hold on. Now you know why I don't go paranormal investigating with Patty. <laughs> I know. I thought they thrived off electrical energy. <laughs> That's always been my excuse, Dean, <laughs> to keep the lights <laughs> leave on. Leave all the lights on. No. <laughs> leave the lights on. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah, they I just need the electrical energy to, to manifest. I just heard something cry. Ooh. Was it a war cry or is it a painful cry? I don't even know if it was human or like animal, but it sounded like. Okay. Not what it sounded like. I'm just terrible at recreating it. This is what it sounds like when doves cry. <sighs> Can you play the drums for us now that I turn the lights off? Can you make any kind of sound? Can you knock on something or knock something over? 
again, it's my monitor maybe, but the costume on the right, his left hand sleeve, there's a shadow behind it. Am I, is anyone else seeing that? Or is that just my screen pixelating? Now you put a light on it, it's disappeared, but, or is that? I can't even see it on my screen. Oh yeah. What is that? I just saw that. Yeah. It's just, it, wow. It just seemed like it, it just. Yeah. Just radiating kind of, heat or something. Yeah. That's what, that's the only way I could describe it. Yeah. It's on that uniform. Yeah. Is that just a low light issue or is that light from, is there light outside? It's in the corner of the house. Let me look. Hold on. There's no, cause the window that's facing the street is over here, not over here. So I just watched the car go by and it didn't shine light over here. And there's no, there's. <gasps> Did you hear that? No, I didn't. I what? Over footsteps, something. Was it like two footsteps? Cause I heard something like pom pom. Yeah, it was like, it was four though. Awesome. Wait, listen. Do it again. What was that? I heard that on my speaker. Yeah, that sounded like a bass drum. That was really good. Can you do it again? When I heard the floor, my hand is on the floor and I'm sitting on the floor. I felt the floor vibrate. Haley said, it said, come here. Oh my God. Can you make a sound and then I'll come there. Oh my God. Okay. My lights just went dim. Okay, Patty's saying go there. She's muted, so we're not hearing the dog barking, but. Make a big sound and then I'll come. Oh, it's like dead still. Be careful using the word dead, Courtney. <laughs> Richard Lell, you have the most terrifying comments. I only speak the truth. <laughs> this is true. It's literally like, it's so quiet, it's making my ears ring. The air is like still. Oh, it's making me dizzy. Yeah. Could this be the calm um, before the storm? If that's what it feels like. Courtney. I don't want to go. Don't tell me to go. I don't want to no, go. I'm not going to. I, what I'm going to do is have you to breathe. I feel like something's laughing at me. Courtney, are you feeling anything around your neck, the back of your neck? Is there any kind of pressure? Because I'm feeling it here. And it the, feels as if it's you that is projecting outwards. In the back of my head has been hurting right here. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much this whole time. I feel it too, but I thought I was just tense. That's a portal right there. That's a portal for spirit. That's why when you bow your head, pray, open that up. 
Oh. I, oh my God. There was like a sound over here by the uniform. Right. Do it again. Do it louder. So Debbie says that uniform belonged to Edward Holbrook. This uh, one? Yeah. Why don't you ask Edward to make himself known? Edward, if that's you, make a sound that we all can hear. Oh, I just got like heart palpitations. Do you have the ovulus? No, that that's not mine. That was Christie's. <sighs> Edward, make a sound that we all can hear. Take some of my energy, not a lot, but take some of it. Excellent, Courtney, because that's what I would, that's exactly what I would have asked. I would have asked it to take some of my energy. Just don't deplete me just so that it can build itself up in whatever way it needs to communicate. Okay. I feel outside of this room. I said a minute ago, I feel like something's laughing at me. I feel like a boy outside of this room who can't wait for me to get out there because he's going to play a trick on me. Oh, a prankster. Yeah. I am a mother and I will not hesitate to use my mom voice on you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you touch my hand? Haley's hearing drumming, the smaller drumming, not the bass drums. I don't know, Courtney, because my it feels as if the Temperature has dropped dramatically yeah. in, in, in my office here. So I, I don't know if I don't know if I'm picking up through you or this is something else that's coming off of some of my objects here. It's it I keep getting like waves of a, not a chill. It doesn't go as far as like a chill, but it's like it's cold air. And I yeah. don't it, it happened downstairs on my lap. It happened. Oh my god, I just saw a shadow. <laughs> no. Awesome. Which direction? Over here. Who knows what evil lurks within the hearts of men? The shadow I knows. Try something. I will not come to you, trickster boy, but you can come to me and we can play a game. Courtney, do you have any do you have any coins or anything in your pockets or anything? Yeah, there you go. You have a cat ball, right? I have several. Let's see what we can do here. All right. If you touch these, they will light up and you can play a trick on me. Oh. Or if you want to roll them, you can roll them and they will make me scream out loud. Can you touch them? It's almost like he's not supposed to come in here because this is where the grown-ups come. But like I, don't, I also don't believe you because I feel like you were going to trip me when I went up there. And he's just in the hallway? Yeah. Come play with my toys. Light them up. Play a trick on me. It'll be so scary.
I feel like pressure around like my temples. <sighs> oh. That's weird. My furnace just kicked in. I have heated floors, so my furnace should never kick in. I believe I'm getting, my room is getting cold too. I'm just gonna hit the mute while my furnace goes. That's bizarre. Okay. Can you touch the toy? My room got colder and I kicked up my heater to high versus medium where it was and the dog is stuck, so I'm back. Okay, but I've installed the uh, $3,000. The radiant heated floor should never make the furnace kick in because I do shows like this. So this <laughs> is very bizarre. I feel like if I turn around and stop looking at them. And Courtney, what if you were to sing him, sing him a song? Okay. Sing him, sing him, or you say a nursery rhyme, whatever, what would you sing to a child? Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Since we were talking about that. Jack fell down and broke his crown and Jill came tumbling after. What about Mary had a little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow. Everywhere that Mary went, Mary went. Everywhere that Mary went, that lamb was sure to go. It followed her to school one day, school one day, school one day. It followed her to school one day. I, I don't know the words. Twas against the rules. Oh. It looked like movement by the uniform again. On my screen, it's getting lighter over there, but I'm not shining a light on it. I've seen that too. Why don't we move to the ladies room oh, uh, and, and check out that closet that we haven't seen. We check in with Richard Lell and see how the painting's going. Are you okay, Courtney? You're no, because scared. that's where I think it's trying to take me. <laughs> Good. Yeah, but well, that's that where the are, and I'm scared. Okay, let me get oh, That's exactly. You got this, Courtney. Scared oh, remember... alone. <laughs> yep. remember, remember that passage, Courtney, to stand your ground. You're going to be fine. I promise. Fight the Philistines. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, fight the Philistines and their uncircumcised. <laughs> I don't know if we got that far in the Bible, Richard Lowe. <laughs> okay. Now tell us about your painting. What do you have there in the foreground? I have the lady, but she's all veiled. She's very bold, but when I am looking at her, she doesn't want me to look at her. So she's, she gets that, don't look at me. I'm like, okay, I won't look at you. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> But this is what you believe is the spirited... I think she's the one that is... I think she's the women's advocate, the, the suffragette. Yes. Yeah, I think she's the suffragette. Even though the suffragette movement didn't really start till the... 18th, 20th century. 20th century, but still. It might be her, but she is... She's lovely. Fantastic. Courtney, are we in the ladies' room now? Yes. <laughs> Don't sound so. Let's just give us a tour of what we're looking at. Oh, there's the boots that you. 
Yeah, these those are the other boots that we've all been feeling and hearing. It's a very small room. Wow. A lot of things in it. I don't like it. I love it, the artifact, but I don't like it in here. Look and at that, this. This person is judging me so hard, and so is this person. So that is who their names are at the bottom. Noah Tori. Yep. Uh -huh, and Betsy Tori. Betsy Tori. Debbie, do we know who Nora and Betsy were? Noah Tori was a doctor in town, and that was his wife, Betsy. And did they ever live in this house? No, they did not. So their pictures are there because the a relation to the Holbrook family, or is it just? They are somewhat related to the Tories, but their pictures are there because they were donated by one of the previous presidents in the 1800s. Ah. Ah. They were related to him. Fantastic. Thank you, Debbie. Courtney, what do you, what do you feel? Like? Again, your Wi-Fi signal is pixelated. What are we looking at? There's some pictures of the family. Oh, these are the Holbrook family. Yep. Edward, Ellen, Agnes, Mary something. So Ellen is the one who had tuberculosis. So that's the one you are aligned to. The picture in the oval frame is Mary Hersey, the Holbrook, the mother of Frederick's wife. Oh, that's She's Frederick's gorgeous. Wife. Yes. Oh. Do you know who the woman in the morning dress is, which is the CDV, which is right next to it? That's an earlier picture of Mary Holbrook. Oh. And those are her children to the right of her. Four of her five children. And that's Agnes's hand. What? That's a plaster cast of her actual hand. Yes. Who did that? Is Mary that a common Agnes, thing? Mary Agnes did it when she was five years old. <laughs> Just as the that. memento? Yes. I love that. That's gorgeous. <laughs> Courtney, put your hand on that. What? The very odd that there is a plaster cast of a five-year-old child's hand. We lost you? I'm sorry. I was losing internet. Can you hear me now? Yeah. I don't know why your internet's so choppy in there. It was great in rehearsal. Yep. I don't know either. Okay, this is so... Very Nobody wants you to be. Yeah, and I'm, I don't, what is this in the closet? I don't know. We're having, we're only getting one every five frames transmitted to us. Oh it's too bright in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving the, oh my God, I just heard something from inside the closet. Inside the closet. Uh-huh. Is there something yeah. scary about that? I think you should open the closet and take a look in. I, I feel like this one's going to jump out and jump scare me. Okay. That would be great. I don't want to look. I don't want to look. Okay, just uh Okay. 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 What is so scary? I don't know. It's terrifying. Some get in the closet is gonna get a visit from Rosie. <laughs> I was gonna suggest it, but now I'm not. Richard Lell, go ahead. <laughs> Courtney, get in the closet. Shut up, boy. Right. You tell her. And turn the light out. Never, 
Okay, of course. <laughs> Have you ever played that game when you were a kid of going in the closet and making out? No, because I was a good girl. Go in the closet. Also, I don't want to go in the closet and make out with a ghost. Thanks so much. <laughs> Worst things could happen. It's supposed to be really good. I'm an expert on such things. Who? Oh, my God. Somebody's asking who's that on the floor in the frame? Is that a picture of somebody or is that just the house? That's a lot of somebody's. Oh, it is. There's, and the, there's, there's some pictures over here of people making shoes also. Oh. Maybe the shoe yeah. factory. I am in the closet. Okay. Mostly. Okay, now I'm all the way in the closet. If this door slams, so help me. You will hear There's me scream from here. No, I'm not closing the door. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I'll close the door. Wait. Mm -hmm. Courtney. Courtney. Mm hmm Terrible to hate it. Does the door does the door automatically lock? Because then don't go in the closet. Yeah, you're locked in that house. No one will get you out of that closet. I can't hear, I can't hear anything. You, I can't hear anything you're saying because the minute I shut the door, I have no internet. Okay, don't close the door all the way is what we're saying. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear us to say don't close the door all the way? Crap. Yeah, but don't close the door all the way. You're locked in the house. There will be no one to get you out if the door closes and locks you in. I didn't close it all the way because I don't believe that someone's not going to play a trick and lock me in. It is very hot in here. Oh, see the string? No. no. You're pick oh, there. just moving. The pull cord, yeah, for the, la for the light. Oh my the closer I get to the closet, the less internet yeah. I have. So sh keep your light shining on that. I can see the string. So that can be a good pendulum. Ask who's there. Ask if someone's there. Ask it to move that 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 string. Okay, if someone's here with me, can you move the string for the light? Is it moving? Can't tell. Can't tell. It's not. Ask another shoe to drop. Oh, God. Where is the shoe that was going to drop? I felt it earlier. Drop the shoe. I'm out of breath like I just ran upstairs. So focus on your breath, Courtney. Slow it down, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Haley saying ask yes or no questions to move the string. If someone's here with me, move the string. Are you here? Move the string. I just heard my own voice. Is it echoing back through your phone? Not through my phone, in the room. That's awesome. I'm hearing something too on my speakers, but it, I can't tell if it's coming from somebody else's room. It just sounded like someone was snoring. Yeah. Was I boring I you? I'm sorry, I'm not that exciting. Yeah. Tell them to wake up. What? Tell, Tell them to wake up. up. 
tell them to wake up, wake up. Wake up. 4.45 a.m. Up and at him. Oh my God, something just touched me on my back. Oh no. Do it again. Go ahead. Touch my hair. Make a sound. Is it? Are you feeling a child's energy, like mocking you or giggling at you? I can't hear you. My internet's going out again. Who are you kidding? There we go. But it's a child's saying, energy, mimicking, mocking you or giggling at you? Yeah. It feels like it came from in here. I honestly, I want to set up the toys in the closet, but sit out here. Okay. 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 And also right. get low, Courtney. Set up the toys and then get low. Okay. Hold on. Okay, while she sets that up, let's check back with Richard Lell. All these fun toys. I think she's lost again. Yeah. It's weird that the internet's so crummy in that room. You can roll around or tap them. Can you get, do you have me still? Yes. Actually, it's much better than it was before. Okay. All right. I set up some really fun toys for you in the closet. You want to play a game? If you touch any one of those things in there, they will light up all kinds of fun colors. Can you take some of my energy, not all, use it, and touch something, one of the things that I put down? Make it light up. I followed you in here. Just like you wanted me to. Go ahead. Somebody said somebody's walking past the door. What? Past the door. Do you see anybody out in the light? I don't, but I'm at an angle, so I can't see what my screen sees. And my eyes are getting heavy. I'm getting another of that heavy feeling coming over. Tim, are you feeling that? I am just feeling a lot of like movement right around Courtney. It just feels like they're just walking right by her back and forth. But the one thing, Courtney, I have to tell you that is that when you were really feeling that hand on your back down here in my office, I actually saw, I saw a shadow person peek out around one of my one of the, the corners of this room and look in and then fade off so i'm wondering if there's a correlation between the energies that are that, that are happening today whether they're being sent or if we're actually somehow vibing on the same plane with that could be that i'm just concentrating so much on what you're doing courtney 
that something I'm waking things up here. Well, I just have that heaviness that's getting stronger and stronger. Something just sucked the energy out of me. And I'm not tired or anything like that. It just went suck. <laughs> and Courtney, there's a cradle in that room, isn't there? No, that's in a different room. Ah. Uh. But I just, I literally just lost connection fully that whole time. So Tim started talking and I heard nothing. And it, I, it completely went black. Oh, that's why it was you were super still? Yeah. Because that was not me. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of weird... This whole show has been weird electrically. Yeah. Uh, Tim, can and you say that what you said again? Because I didn't get to hear you. Basically, what happened was when you got... Said that you had that feeling where something had pressed upon your back. Yeah. Down here in my office, I have a... This area is L-shaped. My collection's on the other side of the little corner. And I saw a shadow person just peek in and peek out. Now, I don't know if we're vibing and we're all in the same, we're in that same etheric field where we're connecting, whether I'm concentrating so much that what's going on. But I found it strange that just almost at the same time that you reported that I had something, I had phenomena down here occur. I feel and like I, I feel like I'm playing a game of cat and mouse. <laughs> yeah. They're in the, they ran like, to another room. I come into a room, they leave the room. That's common because a lot of times they like that they're so playful. They like to go and they like to prank you. And when you get serious and you're trying to do some kind of a conversation with them, they will go and then they will try to get you into another room, go from room to room to room. I've had that happen on board ships. I've had that happen at the Palmyra Historical Society where they want you to play. And to them, getting you to move and follow them is great joy. They have a lot of fun doing that. Also, your internet's way better. Electrically, it seems that as soon as we mentioned it, they... It's like, it's freezing cold in here now in this room. It was hot a second ago, but it feels empty now. It felt so full, like it was so busy in here, and now nothing. Everybody left. Yeah. Maybe we should try to go into the room with a cradle. What do you say? Okay. Let's do it. I'm going to gather up my things. Since you don't want to play with me, I'm going to take the toys away. How rude. Imagine being so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> That's how and embarrassed. <laughs> you gotta shame them. Yeah. <laughs> wow, if that wasn't a mother's comment. Right. <laughs> oh, okay. No. Last chance. I'm gonna take the toys away. Alicia says to ring the shame bell. <laughs> Do we have a shame bell? Not in here, I don't. No. Oh my God. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Patty shame bell. <laughs> All right, good. So, so the cradle that... is in the ladies' room again? The cradle is down the hallway right here. Down the hall. So... Hold on. All right, Patty, remain calm. I'm only turning the light on for a second. <laughs> this is the cradle. Okay. Let me turn my camera. Hold on. Yeah. Have... Wow. Oh, that's gorgeous. <laughs> gorgeous. Tim, really? Gorgeous? Is that the oh, word? Oh, yeah. I love that. I'm there, yeah. That's frightening. No, oh. come on. What? See, this is Dean. This is where we differ. I see beauty in that, and see, that's probably why I don't have any real problems with some of the artifacts that I have in here, especially the ones from asylums and uh, haunted haunted places. I really don't have a problem with them because I find the beauty in them. Look at the okay, beautiful well. quilting. Qu beautiful quilting on that. Yeah, that's gorgeous. 
I said the same thing about this cradle when I came in and saw it and heard the story. Maybe if you're Amish, but good, it's just with splinters. <laughs> See, what an important piece of history. I'm not saying it's not historic. I'm just saying it's it, beautiful. It, okay. You wouldn't stick a baby in it? I wouldn't. What, what oh, I would. That's gorgeous. Not stick it in a milk crate. It's the same thing. It's like <laughs> a milk crate. <laughs> 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 it's oh never mind you better be careful because your Roomba is going to start going now <laughs> She's your I'm throwing away that Roomba but okay uh, we've got, we've got a new one Dean imagine being so embarrassing <laughs> alright I'm going to turn out the light and sit by the cradle and I want you to sing Rockabye Baby all right I can do that. I like this cradle a lot. I know you do. That's why I want you to sing it, Rock. And oddly, even though I have heard stuff in this room, even when I was in here myself, yeah, like earlier before we were live, I this I feel the calmest in this room. Oh. I feel safe in here. Very good. So sing to the cradle. I think this is beautiful. All right. Rock a bye, baby, on the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. And down will come, baby, cradle and all. Isn't this the opening to every horror movie ever? <laughs> also <in> public domain. <laughs> Maybe put the cat toys in there. I feel like someone liked that very much. I would no. love to see that cradle just, oh, just look rock here. a little bit. Put one in the cradle. Spirits, anyone who is here, Courtney feels safe with you right now and you are safe with Courtney. And if you feel like you are safe, as safe as you are, I want you to go ahead and play with those toys. You can, to you can touch them and they make pretty lights. Now do you want to play? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Can you not hear us? What can't you hear? Huh? I don't think she can hear us. Oh, and I just had a message that said something went wrong reloading page. Yeah, I did that too. That happens. But I think that she can't hear us. Courtney, can you not hear us? Did we lose her feet? No, she's there, right? We can see the light from the little- Can you hear us talk, Courtney? Because what happened is she oh, she, not... she sang Rockabye Baby for the, she put the child to sleep. So maybe when she comes back, maybe she needs to wake up the baby. <laughs> oh. Courtney, are you hearing us at all? Any audio? Courtney? Can you hear us? Just say, say yes or no. And now we don't even have an image. Oh, uh -oh. my. No. I, I have like, Where did she go? I guess she's gone, isn't she? I don't know. Let's don't try know. some. I, when you, I, was gonna, I was going to try to find a baby sound. Oh, here she is. Okay. I was talking that whole time. What? I, I sang the whole song. I heard mm -hmm. a cat purring. And nobody was responding to me. And then I realized I was frozen again.
Let's try this, Courtney. You weren't exactly frozen. You were moving. Could you hear me? No. No, because you couldn't hear us either. <laughs> oh my God, I hate that. <laughs> Wake up the baby. Wake up the baby. Wake up, baby. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah. Is yeah, that you? That was not me. I had already turned it off at that point. I just heard a footstep again. I heard that too. <gasps> what was that? Did anybody hear that? Garbled. I heard footsteps. Yes. Yeah. But yeah the garbled so. sound, like a voice. Was that just me? No, I heard it. I heard it too. Patty. I heard it. But okay, you didn't hear I, it. Hold on. I just Patty just said I heard it, and I heard Patty say I heard it from another room of the house. Ooh, Ooh that's awesome. Nice. Oh my gosh. Maybe a spirit has a cell phone in the other room and they're watching. They could be. So the story is in that in the 1657, Grandma Elwell was looking after the baby when a Native American ambush happened in that house. She threw a blanket over the baby. Maybe throw the blanket over the baby, Courtney. The blanket is over the baby. Over like, its head. Put it over its head. All the way over. I don't want to... Okay. Courtney, are you feeling something on your right side? I feel I get, so I'm getting tingles on my right side. My mm. left is right here. Oh, that would be, I'm looking at you through the screen, so that would, your left would be my right. Yeah. Yeah, because I feel it, like, right here going, like, from, from the shoulder going down towards the elbow. Yeah. Like, energy or, like, static. Yeah, it's almost like someone is not hand on my shoulder, per se, but hand on my arm and leaning over me. Almost like, I feel the energy of, a like, being a woman holding a baby. And like the father being behind me, like looking lovingly over the shoulder at the baby. We were told by, by Scared and Alone, our producers, that the Native Americans didn't find the baby. There was the, there were, the, the natives had raided and they were trying to find these people. And the mother took a blanket and put over the baby, but the natives did not find the baby. The baby stayed asleep the entire raid. And she was able to come grab the baby and run away. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I feel like something touching my neck right here. And my hair. Touch my hair. It's okay. I give consent. Oh. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. Your meter jumped a little yeah. bit. So that wasn't, that's not my hand that does that. But right when I moved my hand, I did it. We tried the baby crying, but let's try the baby laughing. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, sorry. 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 Wrong one. I'm just sorry. Yeah. I'm trying to find the music. It. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> OK, 
it, that is more disturbing than the crying, I think. I'm not sure. What is wrong with you, Dean? How can you not laugh when a baby laughs? Because there's a wood milk crate for a crib and a thing. <laughs> like, none of that's hilarious. What is, I'm the one sitting in here and I was laughing because it's contagious. Okay. Oh, did you hear that? Yeah. Did you hear that? That was not me playing. Did you hear that? I heard it in the room with me. Yes. There it is again. Oh my God. Wow. It just got very still again. Yeah. For the best. When does the door unlock to let you out? Look. Oh, wow. You're doing a great job. Do that again. <gasps> Can you make it go higher? If you get closer, it'll get brighter. What a good job. Can you do it again? That's really good. That's really good. Take some of my energy if you want and get closer. I'm not all. If you touch the toys, they'll light up like this. Okay, now you do it. Your turn. Good job, try again. Okay. <laughs> I brought these toys to play with you. Don't you want to play? Meanwhile, <laughs> my light here is flipping on and off. Oh, well, let's screen. see. And the, I keep hearing footsteps over here to my right. In your house? In my house. And there's no one else there with you? No. I don't have neighbors either. <laughs> oh, gosh. Of course, now the light, now that you're the camera's on me, the light is fine. The light's perfectly fine to, to not do anything right now. <laughs> oh, there it is. It went off again. It went off. Well, we... way, it, it goes off, but... I guess it just is camera shy. Okay. But that's a completed painting? Yeah, I think so. Awesome. And where can anybody find these as you sell them online? Oh, they'll be on Instagram, on the Gentleman Psychic Instagram. I'll, I, I, will, I will post them after the show. Fantastic. And anybody wants one can get that. So thank you again, Richard Lell, for being here with us. Do you want to take us through a breathing cleansing cycle? As sure. we end our show. Sure. Should we go back and see Courtney? Sure, Courtney. Are you ready for that, my darling? Want to turn the light on before we do it? Mm, hold on. I'm going to use you to turn the light on. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Selfie stick for the win. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're for. And now I get it. 
All right, I guess then with that, we should take three deep breaths into the nose and out through the mouth. There it is. Did you see my light? Yes, I did see that. It has been. Oh, <laughs> let's breathe that energy away so your light <laughs> works for the next one. All right, and into the nose, out the mouth. Here we go. Oh, very good. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Richard Lil. Patty, you're at WitchCon. Is that going to continue? Yes. And well, Tim may be there. I will be there. It's going on now. Amazing teachers from all over the world. I'm teaching Sunday morning, something old world magic for the modern world, something off my book, 10, 15 Pacific time, 1, 15 Eastern and whatever in the middle. But there's amazing classes all weekend. It's going on now, all day tomorrow and all day Sunday. And where do we find that? Where, what website is there? Witchcon.com. Witchcon.com. Excellent. Witchcon, that says a lot. Witchcon.com. Yeah. Oh, and look there at all those is. places. Look at um, that. Tuesday is my school where Richard Lael also teaches. Of course, Wednesday, join us for the Witches Movie Cousin where we disagree about witchy movies. <laughs> I will be in Vegas the first weekend in March doing a real witchy weekend with two seances, workshops, storytelling, private sessions then off to Arizona, then off to Romania. Everybody should come to Romania with Sebastian. What? It's oh, a Romania. vampire tour, all the hot Transylvania spots and everything else. Just go to my website and go from there. And that's where I am. And I'm thrilled to be here with you guys and thrilled Thank to you have again. him step in with us. One of my favorite people in the world. He taught you all to table tip. Thank <laughs> you so much. And Tim, absolutely. Thank you for joining us. It's been a pleasure having you here. Honor. It's an honor. I miss you guys. I don't get a chance to see you as often I, as we possibly can. And hopefully we'll bump into each other someplace down the line here. I see you're in Toledo at April 11th and 12th at Midwest Parafest. I might yep. pop down to see you there. Oh, that would be phenomenal. That would be phenomenal. And I, and I, doing... That's my first appearance there. And I can't wait because that's one of the ones I've wanted to go to for so many years. Excellent. Thanks so much for joining us, Tim. And Courtney. Are you? <gasps> what? That's me. Yes, Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> Courtney, you're you're now going to be unlocked, or how are you getting out of there if you're locked in? Uh, we're going to figure it out. But before I leave, I have an announcement to make. Oh, please. So we had a contest last week that oh, we comment would win a t-shirt. So I picked my favorite comment. I thought it was hilarious and so appropriate. So there's the t-shirt that we're going to win. And the winner was Lisa Merrill Hinchy, because after the ghost touched me on the butt last week, she said, I haven't been touched by a man in years, but the ghost of a man. <laughs> and I laughed for a long time after I read that. So Lisa, send either me at the themes on everything a message or send mystery control a message with your address so we can get you your prize shipped out. Absolutely. Congratulations, Lisa. Are we doing that again this week? I'm not even sure. I forgot to ask. A favorite comment wins another t-shirt from Mystery Control? Yes, I, says the I producer. Courtney, your job is cut out again this week to find out uh, your favorite comment. I'm on it. And in the meantime, if you didn't win, don't feel sad because you can go to mysterycontrol.com. You can get a ghost bait shirt like I have on. All the fun stuff. Patty's Power Panties, which I have soiled time and time again, being on the show. <laughs> <laughs> and she wears them on her head. Oh, I did. <laughs> That's right. Patty's Power Panties. <laughs> yeah, get yours today. Absolutely. So again, thank you everyone for joining us. And remember, this has been a live interactive paranormal investigation at the Holbrook Homestead. So if you've seen anything, you can go back, review. And if we missed anything, please let us know over at Scared and Alone. Till next week, I'm Dean Haglin. We'll see you then, everybody. Thank you. Get out. Die. Die. What? Said, die. Get out. Die. Die. Oh, my God. Oh, my and God. it's like the same okay. voice, too. It is the same voice. It's yeah. the same tone. Maybe... Oh Maybe we should get out of that room because yeah. he was lighting up and it said, get out or die. I don't know. Get out or die. Get out I or heard. die. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, what happened, Courtney?
You scared the crap out of me. <laughs> I don't know. Like what there was something flying. What do you mean flying? A bat? Whoever's here and interacting with me, are you trying to bring me up to the second floor? Look at it blue. Listen, I can see it on this, but it's not really doing it in person. What, I'm imagining that? I'm also hearing some sort of voice. At night, when they open back up in the morning, that doll was in a different part of the store. Go red. Oh, Go red. no. It's, oh, jeez, there's the car moving around. Why is it moving by itself? People are smelling embalming fluid. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. Everybody's saying you're not safe. David, how do you feel? Are you okay? No, no, I, I'm not okay. Ask them if they're ready to go to war. 